In this video, we are going to discuss about IP header. I'll just cover some basic fields which are very important from CCNA point of view. Hi, my name is Sudhanshu and on behalf of IP Header team, I welcome you to this video. So let's discuss about IP header and I'm not going to discuss uh, all the fields of IP header. I'm just going to discuss some of the fields which are important from a beginner's point of view for uh, you can say maybe a CCNA student. Okay. So uh, what is IP header? Okay. When you want to send data from source to destination, there is an additional layer three header or IP header that is added. Okay. This header in general, you know, the most important function of it is to provide an address from source to destination. Just like when you send a, e a email or, you know, just a courier, you send, a, you write a sender's address, you write to this and then you send it. Okay. So there are basically these fields and there are some other things which we need to take care of. Okay. So uh, let's look at it from a whiteboarding point of view. I'll just show you a quick uh, field all the fields quick look on to the all the fields of IP header okay so if you look at this okay here uh, this is one of the screenshots I've taken from the IP header or IP protocol Wikipedia page okay uh, one of the trusted sources to you know have this image and uh, when you look at this okay uh, what you see here is that there is basically uh, you can say uh, if you start counting from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 7 this is basically what 8 bits okay another 8 bits another 8 bits so 24 and so if you just count, consider it from 0 to 31 that is a total of 32 bits here okay and if you look at this okay the source IP address here this is a 32 bits address field okay uh, obvious from the name this will be the source IP address of the image uh, of the machine who is uh, sending data okay and here we'll have a destination IP address which will be again 32 bits in size okay so these are some of the two obvious fields right we'll have a source and we'll have a destination another interesting field here is this time to live okay uh, which is often misunderstood because of its name okay so uh, when you consider time to live okay what is time to live uh, see basically we don't want packets to move endlessly in an IP network like suppose let's say I ping something today okay I tried to check connectivity from uh, to something today suppose that packet gets lost okay we don't want it to continue endlessly right so we want to set an upper bound on the time limit okay you can say kind of we want to decide a time that okay uh, a time of death like okay you know we want to kill the packet if it crosses this many routers okay now it is not actually time okay what they have done is they have made this time to live field in terms of hop counts okay so when a packet crosses one router suppose this is a source okay and uh, somewhere this is the destination when the packet crosses this router okay we say okay this is one hop we cross another router this is two hops three hops okay so how how do they you know set an upper bound on the time okay basically this is as you can see it's a eight bits field okay so in eight bits you can go from a value from zero to 255 if we talk in terms of decimal if we talk in terms of bits you can have all zeros and all ones right uh, that will be another one right so uh, that's zero that's 255 uh, depending upon the operating system like uh, Cisco routers they put up a value of 255 in this field so any source if the source is Cisco router they'll put up a value of 255 uh, most of the Windows environments they put up a value of 128 suppose this is a Windows machine and it put up a value of 128 on the IP packet when it reaches this first router this value of TTL is going to get decremented by 1 so the value becomes 127 
when it leaves the router for the next router okay similarly when this router receives it it decrements it again by 1 making it 126 finally this router again making it 125 and which finally it reaches the destination now point here is suppose midway somewhere this packet gets lost okay and maybe it goes into a loop here okay if it is going into a loop here what will happen is its ttl value sometime after crossing a certain number of router it is going to become zero right when a router looks at a packet and finds that the ttl has reached zero and the packet has not reached its destination router is going to basically discard that packet okay so this is how you set an upper bound on it okay because you are fixing that okay 128 routers is the max that the packet can cross okay if the packet gets lost in a loop the routers can discard it okay clear so now this is how we set an upper bound okay and now most of the students they think okay maybe 128 is a too low number it's a very high number if you consider most of the times you cross if you suppose you are going from some indian uh, source to a us destination i'm just taking an average roughly you will cross 10 to 12 routers maybe 15 routers max so if you consider that if some packet has reached this 128 okay or exhausted this 128 basically they have really gone into some kind of loop okay so it's really a high number okay so next let's talk about the protocol field in ip header okay now there is this field again an 8 bits field which is again important um and just to illustrate this let's take an example like okay you want to send something from this source to destination okay now in the previous videos we have discussed the concept of encapsulation decapsulation i'll just give you a quick review on that and what you can see here is that okay suppose i send a data what happens is uh on the data we put a layer 4 header maybe tcp maybe udp uh, then we put a layer 3 header right and then we finally make a layer 2 header and layer 2 trailer okay now my point is like finally the bits are transmitted from the source okay onto the media now what happens at the destination in the destination this frame is received right and layer 2 trailer and it is decapsulated right the data goes like this at the source and goes like this from layer's point of view at the destination okay now point here is that you can think of this as like you know putting this into another box putting a label on it similarly putting this into another box putting a label on it and likewise now this you can think of it as kind of an unboxing like the frame is you know uh, removing the header trailer pulling this packet out of it this is the packet and similarly you know we can uh, remove the packet and get a segment out of it now point here is that here if the network layer doesn't know which upper layer should i give it to or which upper layer protocol should i give this data segment to there is going to be a problem right so basically just on this label or the ip header that we are talking here it should have some format or some way to tell network layer that okay which upper layer protocol should this data be handed over to this is what is protocol field suppose this packet has a tcp segment encapsulated here okay now at this case the protocol number will be 6 okay another example suppose this has udp inside of the packet then the protocol number will be 17 so when the network layer looks at that okay the protocol number is 17 
it will hand it over to UDP. And similarly, if the protocol number written here on the protocol field is 6, it will hand it over to TCP. Okay. And similar thing, if you have a ping, then for ICMP, the protocol number is 1. Preferably from CCNA, uh, you know, beginner point of view, you should remember at least these three protocol numbers. Okay. Where ICMP is protocol number 1. ICMP is the one which we use for ping. Okay. So these are the four fields that you need to be aware about IP header from beginner's point of view. Okay. So source IP tells where the packet is coming from. Destination IP tells where the packet is going to. TTL is to set an upper bound. Value is decremented each time packet crosses a router. And if it is zero, packet is discarded. Finally, protocol number field tells network layer about which upper layer or which transport layer protocol should the data be handed over to. I think that's pretty much it about IP header. Thank you for watching.